the scroll that breaks the camel's back. When you look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, the scroll that breaks the camel's back. Won't you point your finger at somebody and say, neighbor, the pastor talking to you. It is the scroll that breaks the camel's back. You can be seated. You can be seated. God send your word. Let it break rocks up in pieces. Let it fall afresh in this house. And no one will leave here confused, but empowered. Send the anointing that breaks yokes. shouted amen. amen. Can I have your undivided attention for a moment? And as I complete my assignment for today. Next slide, please. <coughs> On Tuesday, January the 23rd this year, CNN reported that um, the United Airlines CEO was frustrated with Boeing's, the aircraft manufacturer, that they had problems. The National Transportation Safety Board <clears throat> had to answer questions about the investigation. The news interview was entitled, The Straw That Broke the Camel's Back. <clears throat> United Airlines, one of the biggest buyers of of Boeing's jets is losing patience and is troubled with the aircraft maker mechanical problems. And after a door plug blew off while taking off in flight on an Alaska plane on this past January the 5th, leaving a massive hole in the side of the plane while taking off. The CEO said, I'm disappointed uh, that this keeps happening at Boeing because they've been having issue, issues of, of been having these uh, consistent uh, manufacturing challenges and they need to take actions for their problems. And while making an emergency landing, the passengers, watch this, had no idea that the door plug hidden behind the interior surface of the cabin at both window seats in row number 26 was all that stood between them and the sky. Whoever was sitting in row 26 could have easily fell out the plane while the plane was in the sky. In a, in a, in a, in a uh, preliminary report released last month, it was said that the door plug, I'm moving a little slow, but y'all stay with me. The door plug in question was missing four, four key bolts that helped keep the door plug in place. Investigators believe the bolts were not reinstalled, watch this, while the plane received repair work at Boeing's factory last year. Human error, someone left out four bolts. <clears throat> 
However, the plane landed without any serious injuries, but the Federal Aviation Administration ordered the grounding and additional inspections of every plane. Boeing apologized for the problems that led to the incident at Alaska Air. And this is what they said. We have let down our airline customers and are deeply sorry for the significant disruption to them, to their employees and their passengers. Because someone forgot to put four bolts in the door plug of the plane. <clears throat> now, Boeing has had a series of quality issues for the last, actually, five years with two fatal crashes, which has caused a breaking point in the relationship between Boeing and United Airlines. Caused a breaking point. So here it is. Whether you are rich or poor, we all have breaking points. Whether, whether you have a degree or, or a GED, we all have breaking points. Whether your vocabulary and enunciation are, are limitless, every one of us have a breaking point. It doesn't matter if you are, or it doesn't matter if you drive a $50,000 car, or a $20,000 car, or a $10,000 car, we all have breaking points. It doesn't matter if you live in Cedar Grove, or Southern Trace, we all, have breaking points. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we all have breaking points. It doesn't matter if you have an American Express card or a Visa prepaid reloadable card. <laughs> it doesn't matter, we all have breaking points. It doesn't matter that if you are the CEO of your company or if you are a hourly wage employee, we all have breaking points. And so a door plug blowing off while taking off in flight was the breaking point between Boeing's and United Airlines. And a breaking point is that you can push people so far that they will lose their sense of directions. You can push people so far that they will come unglued and lose what matters at the moment. You can push people so far that they will forget your title and your status and, and go off on you. You can push people so far and they can forget about their religion and, and give you a piece of their mind. You can push people so far because everybody has a breaking point. Now look at your neighbor again and say, everybody has a breaking point. Now, <clears throat> the straw that breaks the camel's back originated from the, 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 uh, the ancient Arab proverb that says the last straw breaks the camel's back. Now watch this, which refers to one small thing added to another small thing until finally the last small thing becomes too much. The Proverbs alludes to the fact that to a camel having items loaded onto his back one after another until finally one last item loaded on the camel's back collapses the camp to the floor. And so the straw that breaks or broke the camel's back 
refers to a person who has reached his limitations, who has reached his limits, reached his breaking point standing on the edge. Here's the truth even about you. There were so many straws before the last one, but it was the stress of life and the stressor that, that initiated the last breaking point in your life. I need you to look at your neighbor again, because you're going to be looking at him doing for, the, for the rest of the service, and say, neighbor, life straws and life stressors will not kill you. Will not kill you. It will not kill you. The fact of the whole matter is when a straw breaks your back, the breaking can push you over the edge. Believe it or not, stress is with you always, all the time. It comes from mental stress. It comes from emotional stress. It's stress. It comes. It comes from physical activity stress. But however, stress is a motivator to take action. And if a door plug blows off while making your life better, God. Uh, God, you got to trust God and take care of yourself. You have to learn how to take care of yourself. Look at someone say, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. While building your business portfolio, you got to take care of yourself and don't lose your mind. And if a door blood blows off while doing the best you can, just always remember that door plugs are replaceable. When you open your mouth and say, keep doing your best, because door plugs are replaceable. Have you ever had a breaking point and you knew this is a straw that breaks the camera's back? Remember how they treated you in high school? That was a straw. Remember when your relationship begins to crumble and and then you dump them because you caught them cheating. That was the straw. Remember how they treated you after you let them borrow from you again and again. That was the straw. Uh, let's talk about these straws for a moment. Remember when you had to beg people to love you and then respect you. That was a straw. Remember when you went out of your way to help someone, but they forgot about you. That was a straw. I mean, open your mouth and say, that was the last straw. That was the last straw. Be, before I let you mess me up, that's the last straw. Before I miss God in this season of my life, that's the last straw. Before I turn my back on God, that's the last straw. Before I walk contrary to his will, that's the last straw. Before I lose my mind, that's the last straw. Sometimes you have to just tell folk, that's the last straw. Before I lose my salvation, that's the last straw. Before I find myself entangled with a yoke of bondage, that's the last straw. Before I miss my blessing, that's the last straw. I need you to open your mouth and say, before I miss my blessing, that's going to be the last straw. I'm not going to let nothing and nobody keep me from my blessing. That will be the last straw. Open your mouth again and say, that's the last straw. In fact, reach over and grab your neighbors and neighbor. That's the last straw. Jesus, I've been through too much. Glory to God. I've been through, I've been through too much. <laughs> I said I've been through too much and that's going to be the last straw I let you misuse me that's going to be the last straw I let you talk about me be behind my back that's going to be the last straw open your mouth again and say that's the last straw that's, that's, that's going to be the last straw glory to God that's going to be the last straw going to be the last straw Gonna be the last straw. <laughs> Somebody said that's gonna be the last straw. Because it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. In ancient, and I'm closing, <laughs> in ancient brick making process, 
straw was used as a binding material to reinforce the making of bricks. So they, they took straw and used it to reinforce making bricks. They used straw as a as an agricultural byproduct, making straw a cost-effective material for making bricks. So it didn't take much to make bricks by using straw. And so in this brick-making process, straw helped the bricks to dry more evenly and prevented the bricks from cracking during the drying process. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. And so straw was important in the brick making process as a reinforcement agent that helped bind the mud together, making the brick stronger and more durable. And the fibers provided structural integrity and reduced cracking as the bricks dried and hardened itself. Look at your neighbors and neighbors, stay with him, he's going somewhere, stay with him. Come on, look at his mind and say, stay with him. I'm, he's going somewhere. The Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that Pharaoh took immediate action and sent down orders to the slave drivers. Watch what he said. He said, don't provide straw for making bricks. Make them get their own straw. Watch this. Don't give them another straw. Make them produce the same number of bricks as they were when they was using straw. And this is what the devil is doing to you. Glory to God. He takes the straw of oppression to increase your affliction. Because he knows one thing. When straw is mixed with your faith, straw makes you stronger and tougher. I need you to open your mouth and say, the process is making me better the process is making me wiser, and the process is making me stronger. Mm. Reach over and grab your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it's gonna make you better. It's gonna make you better. It's gonna make you. It's gonna make you better. Now, notice in the text today that when Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh to request the release of the Israelites so they could go and worship God, Pharaoh said, "I ain't doing it." He said, make them go and get their own straw. All they wanted to do was go and worship. Now, the people of God was already enslaved in Egypt and forced to make bricks for Pharaoh. But please get this and don't miss this. Pharaoh made it hard on them to keep them from attending worship. I'm going somewhere with this. I said, Pharaoh made it hard on them to keep them from attending worship. This is what the devil would do to you. He would make you work harder to make ends meet to keep you from worship. Mm. You got to have two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. In other words, go get your own straw and miss church. Go and get your own straw and make attending worship last on your list. But I don't come what come hell or high water. It don't matter what goes on in my life. I ain't missing no worship. I ain't missing my moment of worship. I said, whatever's going through, whatever you're going through in your life, you can't miss worship. Won't you open your mouth and say, I can't miss worship. Amen. Worship cannot be the last thing on your list. I can't miss worship. I don't care what I'm going through. What happened to me on Friday? What happened to me on Saturday? I can't afford to miss worship. Look at your neighbor again. Say, neighbor, don't miss worship. Don't miss worship. The devil will make it hard for you. He'll make it hard for you. It'll be a Sunday morning and a pipe will burst in your house. It'll be a Sunday morning and you run out of gas. It'll be a Sunday morning and you got a flat tire. Glory. He will make it hard for you to get to worship. But open your mouth and decree it in this house. And say it again. Say, I'm not missing worship. If I have to get an Uber, I'm not missing worship. I'm not missing worship. If I have to call and get the van to pick me up, I'm not missing worship. If I have to call the friend to drop me off, I'm not missing worship. Because I got to get in the presence of God. Yeah. Touch your name and say, get in his presence. Get in his presence. 
Now remember the straw that breaks the camel's back refers to small things added to another until found on top of another one small thing and then another small thing, then another small thing until finally it's too much. Have you ever been, had something going on in your life and you realize this is too much? You had one thing that happened over here, another thing that happened over there, another thing that happened on Monday, something that happened on Wednesday, and you decide, you know, this is too much. It's like a camera having things loaded on its back and after another until finally one thing Sooner or later, you collapse. And that's what the devil trying to do. He trying to get you to collapse. But I need to, I need to decree in this house, you ain't about to collapse. Not in this season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's when a person reaches limits. And if you thought I was giving you an agricultural lesson about straw and about barley and about wheat, then you missed it today. If you thought that, that I put a camera on this screen to get you to visualize what happened to a camera when he is overloaded, you missed it. If you thought I put a camera on this screen to test your IQ and, and your cognitive, cognitive uh, abilities, then you missed it. I need you to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, don't miss this, don't miss this. You missed it. Pharaoh said, no more straw. When the enemy wants to add pressure on you, glory to God, get your own straw wherever you can find it. And the Bible says the people all, they scatter all over Egypt, scrambling and trying to find straw to meet the same quota. By withholding straw, Pharaoh tried to break their spirit and demonstrate his authority. Pharaoh took straw from them to break them, to overload them. He put a burden on them to break them and overwork them. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? Have you ever felt overloaded? Have you ever felt this is too much? Have you ever felt, I don't know how I'm going to make it tomorrow? Have you ever felt, I don't know how, to, how, to, how this is going to come out, how this is going to work out? Have you ever felt how I'm going to get out of this? Have you ever felt that this is too much for me to bear? decree today that there is an anointing that's about to break that. There is an anointing that's about to lift that heavy burden. And I came to prophesy to about 10 persons that will, that will receive this revelation that Pharaoh can't break you even if he tried. I came to decree that Pharaoh can't break you even if he tried. Open your mouth say, Pharaoh, you can't break me. I said, open your mouth say, Pharaoh, you can't break me. Now throw your hands up and say, you can't break me. You can't, you can't break me. Come hell or high water, you can't break me. Come whatever I'm going through, you can't break me. Sickness in my body, you can't break me. Financially going through, you can't break me. I got this going on, but you can't break me. Open your mouth again and say, you can't break me. And I don't know who your Pharaoh is, but I know who the oppressor is. He comes to oppress you. The devil sent the Pharaoh in your life to stress you out, to keep you, to keep your life in limbo. Did you hear what I just said? To keep your life in limbo. The devil sent that Pharaoh in your life to break you, to turn your life upside down, inside out. That devil, the devil sent that Pharaoh in your life to disrupt you, to interrupt your life. The devil sent that Pharaoh in your life to disturb you and to aggravate your life. The devil sent that Pharaoh in your life to intrude, to frustrate your life. But I need you to do the Create in this house if you ain't scared and open your mouth say Pharaoh you can't break me take the straw but you still can't break me take my car but you still can't break me take my home you still can't break me afflict my body but you still can't break me afflict my mind but you still can't break me open your mouth again say Pharaoh you can't break me High five your name said he can't break you. He can't break you. It's too much in you. He can't break you. It's too much in you. He can't break you. Come on, high five again and say he can't break you.
And then so the Bible says, and it shall come to pass. Somebody say, come to pass. In that day that his burden shall be taken away from off his shoulder and his yoke from off his neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because the anointing. Lift your hands right here. Lift your hands right here. I decree right here. There is an anointing. Mm. that's getting ready to break the yoke there is an anointing mm. that's getting ready to lift heavy burdens there is an anointing Jesus the anointing is here to break that yoke the anointing is here to lift heavy burdens the anointing is here to gift your life the anointing is here open your mouth say the anointing is here the anointing is here the anointing is here to strengthen your life the anointing is here to protect your life. The anointing is here to break every chain. The anointing is here to heal your brokenness. The anointing is here to heal your body. The anointing is here to transform your mind. The anointing is here to, to perform miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow them that believe. The anointing is here. Open your mouth and say, the anointing is here. I said, open your mouth and say, the anointing is here. I said, open your mouth and say, the anointing is here. The anointing is here to put your life back on track. I said, the anointing is here to release us, to release the spirit of bondage. I said the anointing is here to reverse what he meant for evil. I said the anointing is here to rebound you from failure. The anointing is here to redefine who you are. The anointing is here to recover what the devil stole. The, did you hear what I just said? I said the anointing is here to recover what the devil stole. The anointing is here to restore your joy. Somebody said the, the, the anointing is here to restore my joy for this joy I have the world did not give it to me this joy I have and the world cannot take it I need to look at it and say neighbor the joy you have the world can't take it look at someone else again and say neighbor the anointing is here to restore your life to replenish your life to refresh your life. Open your mouth and say, anointed, refresh me. Anointed, restore me. That was a straw that broke the camel's back. But today the anointing is here. Glory to God to restore your life. Lift your hands in this house. Lift your hands in this house. And say, anointed, fall. Anointing fall on me. The devil has done everything he could to break you. Watch this. So give me something soft. Everybody got a Pharaoh. Everybody got a Pharaoh. I don't know what your Pharaoh is, but everybody got a Pharaoh. That comes to break you. But not today. Someone said, not today. He won't break you today. I prophesy in this house. Lift your hands. Lift. I prophesy in this house. Sickness came to Says sickness can't break you. Well, I prophesy in this house. People that don't like you can't break you. I prophesy in this house. People that's against you can't break you. Watch this. People that left you can't break you. 
people that use you, used you, can't break you. I prophesy in this house while your hands are lifted. People who said ugly things about you can't break you. People who have a pharaoh mentality can't break you. People that have the spirit of pharaoh can't break you. Jesus. I decree while your hands are lifted. Who can separate me from the love of God? other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Please hear me. The Bible says the Bible said that Pharaoh was so upset with the children of Israel because all they wanted to do was to take a break and go and worship. Read the text. When Aaron and Moses went to Pharaoh and said, can you at least give us a break that we go into the wilderness and worship? Pharaoh, <laughs> because the hardness of his heart, he said, take the straw from them and make them work hard. Sometimes that's what the enemy will do when the enemy is trying to destroy you. He'll put so much on you, more than you can bear. But I decree in this house today, and I title this message, The Straw That Breaks the Camel's Back. I want you to understand that you are not the camel. That's my point that you're not the camera because it's not going to break you. Not today. That's, I said all of that in my message today to get to this point. I don't care what you're going through in life right now. It's not going to break you. I gave you an explanation with bricks, what happens with straw, when it mixed with bricks, how it makes it stronger. I told you all of that. So I get to this point today that it doesn't matter how loaded you get, doesn't matter how overloaded you get, it does not matter how overwhelmed you become. I came to decree in this house it ain't going to break you. Can I just say that this is not you? They put too much on the camera. Camel. And they broke the camera's back. But this is not you. I need you to open your mouth and say, that's not me. Oh, there's an anointing that breaks every yoke. Watch this. Once the yoke is broken, then there is an anointing that destroys the yoke. Not only does the anointing break it, but it destroys it. And I said all that today to get to this point. Because I don't know who I'm preaching to and who I will preach to later. <laughs> it ain't going to break you. It ain't going to break you. And I don't know what you've been through in life, but I want you to politely open your mouth and say, and say this with me. 
Say, everything I've been through, it cannot break. What happened to me last week, it cannot break you. What happened to you last week, it cannot break you. Losing a job, it cannot break you. Losing your home, it cannot break you. Losing something material, it cannot break you. But one thing you cannot do, you cannot live, lose your joy. You cannot lose the joy of your salvation. And I decree in this house that Pharaoh cannot break you. I don't care what you're going through right now. There's some folks in this house, and I sense it in the Holy Ghost. You're going through something devastating right now. Trying to figure out how. Trying to figure out why. But let your why be your motivation. Let your why be your motivation. Listen, we have to learn to accept whatever God allows. If God allowed it to happen, it's only going to make you better. If God allowed it to happen, it's it only going to make you wiser. If God allowed it to happen, it's only going to make you stronger. And I came to, to decree in this house that it ain't going to break you. I preached a message a few months ago saying you may bend, but you won't break. And I came to decree in this house, you may bend a little, but you won't break. You might have some ups and downs, but you ain't going to break. You might feel like throwing in the towel, but you're not going to break. You might feel like giving up, but you're not going to break. You, you might try to figure out, is it worth it all, but you're not going to break. I need you to open your mouth and say, ain't nothing is about to break me, because I trust in God. Ain't nothing about to break me, because I believe in God. I said, thank you, Shana, for standing there. Ain't nothing about she, but she understand what I'm saying. Ain't nothing is about to break me. I said, ain't nothing. You can walk away from me. You can talk about me just as much as you please. And the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. Because ain't nothing going to break me. I need somebody to open your mouth and say, ain't nothing is about to break me. Ain't nothing about to break me. Yeah. Ain't nothing about to break me. I said, open your mouth. Say, ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing about to break me. Ain't nothing. Though he slay me, yet would I trust him. Because ain't nothing about to break me. I said, though he slay me, but yet would I trust him. Because ain't nothing about to break me. Glory.